Blacksmiths, especially those who are new to the craft, seem to have a real compulsion to work with railroad spikes, but they can be a little bit hard to hold on to. So today, let's look at making a pair of tongs made just for holding on to a railroad spike. Ken's Custom Iron sent us a box. Let's see what's in it. It's like all sorts of cool stuff here. It looks like a very nice little set of chisels there. Something else over here. And a super heavy duty center punch. That's a nice set of stuff right there. And of course, what Ken's is famous for are their tong blanks. And that looks like what's in here, along with some other stuff. This is a set of railroad spike tongs though, which explains why the railroad spikes and a twisting wrench that is designed to fit railroad spikes. And unlike a lot of people selling pre-cut tong blanks, Ken's includes the instructions and an appropriate rivet. The included note says the chisels are made out of H13, so these should hold up very well. And this is their railroad spike bundle. So if you buy the bundle, it comes with all these things. They've also included a very nice t-shirt. Today's video is sponsored by Ken's Custom Iron, maker of quick tongs, rapid tongs. They're selling punches, chisels, and other pre-cut product supplies, as well as a couple of versions of an air supplied power hammer. So check out Ken's Custom Iron if you're interested in any of these wonderful products. So what do you say we assemble the railroad spike tongs? I prefer to start by drawing out the reins a little bit and getting them rounded up so they're more comfortable. You can certainly leave these the way they are and just knock the corners off with a file or a grinder if you're in a hurry for some reason. But I like them just a little bit longer and a little bit rounder than that would result in. Up near the boss, I just want to smooth out the pre-cut blank. They aren't bad, but there's always a little bit of roughness from the cutting process. As I draw it out and get further down the reins, I'll transition from square to octagon and then round where I actually grip the reins. Working over the horn would probably be a little bit faster, but since I'm not doing that much drawing out and I don't want to get carried away and make them too long or skinny, I'm just going to work over the face of the animal. Again, this is all just up to what your preference is. With the reins drawn out to suit your personal preference, we need to turn our attention to the jaws of the tongs. The jaws are slightly different. One of them is solid. One of them has a notch cut out that will fit around the railroad spike. I'm going to start with the solid jaw, and the first thing we want to do is bend that over at 90 degrees. I'm going to put this in the vise with a little notch up, and about halfway down the notch at the edge there, and just bend it over 90 degrees. With that bent 90 degrees, we now want to put a twist in it and clean up the transition between that jaw and where the support is. You need to do essentially the same thing to the other tong half, but you need to keep in mind the relationship between these two jaws. In use, they have to overlap this way 
and not out this way. So pay attention to which way you're bending it and make sure it's correct. I'll bend it standing upwards in the vise and you want to bend it about halfway across this solid web here. Don't try to bend it just right at the notch. Stick that out about halfway. Can suggest upsetting these corners a little bit to make this a little bit stronger. In both cases, when you do this twist, you want to go counterclockwise. The next thing to do is drill or punch some holes. The raised square corners from the twist will probably be in the way and affect the function of the tongs. So make sure you clean all that up with a file or a grinder before you assemble. This is also a good time to deal with any little cold shuts or anything else that looks like it might become a stress point for that matter. These come with a 5 16 rivet for assembly. As with most tongs, they not only won't open and close at this point, but I'm sure they don't hold a railroad spike even if they did. So we're going to heat it up and make the necessary corrections. Heating up the joint and working it back and forth very gently is usually all it takes to loosen it up so the tongs work properly. Then we'll need to adjust them so they actually fit a railroad spike. I've been quenching the boss, so I'm only working with the jaws. I don't need to adjust the boss any at this point. That's pretty good. I think I'd like my reins to spread just a little further so I can get a little bit better grip. These are liable to touch if I squeeze hard. Now I'll isolate heat just in the reins behind the boss so I can make that fine adjustment. I'll give these a good wire brushing and before they're completely cool, finish them with a little bit of beeswax. You want to put the wax on while it's just hot enough to melt the wax and smoke very lightly. If it smokes too much, you're just burning it. Well, that wax coating will help prevent rust on these and it will lubricate the joint so these should work flawlessly for years to come. Like most of you, I've done some work with railroad spikes ever since I got interested in blacksmithing. So for 30 years, I've been messing around with these things, but I have never had a pair of tongs purposely made to hold them. So we're going to need to explore this concept a little bit further. Ken's railroad spike bundle included not only the tongs, but three spikes and a twisting wrench. 
So perhaps in next week's video, we will look at doing something with a railroad spike. Maybe that ubiquitous railroad spike knife that everybody has to make, at least as a rite of passage. I want to thank you for taking your time to watch the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. I want to thank Ken's Custom Iron for sponsoring today's video and sending out the tongs as well as the spikes and the twisting wrench. All of it's going to be put to good use in the future. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.